Hello everyone and welcome. Tervehdys kaikille ja tervetuloa mukaan tulevaisuuden lukioon suuntaamassa hankkeen webinaariin. Tämä on opetushallituksen rahoittama hanke. Next we have Tanya and we are talking about well-being and learning and especially uh, visual tools aiding, aiding the learner. And actually um, I will let Tanya present herself a bit more. Okay, hi everybody. I'm a graphic designer uh, at the very core and I'm also a visual communication designer researcher. So I approach uh, design as a learning issue. That means I think that people who are dealing with learning and teaching have a lot to do with design. I think learning is actually a design process itself. We share a lot of common interests and actually we approach uh, a lot of um, issues that have to do with design and learning that are quite common in between. This is more or less the cycles of design in which we make uh, use of divergent and convergent thinking. And it's uh, thought to be that divergent thinking is this like spreading out, getting a lot of ideas such as brainstorming and it's very creative and, uh, and, and free, so to speak. And then convergent thinking is more into uh, purging out the things that probably won't work and then uh, focusing on the ones that actually do. But in order to learn, we actually need these two. So I think uh, this whole idea of cycling again and reframing is a lot to do with also design and design work. And since design is very much user oriented or user centered, I would say that in my case, it's not only users because I don't only work with users, but I work with learners. So I think design is also very learner oriented. And that's kind of like my point of departure in my research. We as designers have a huge amount of tools. Our toolbox is quite broad and the, the methods that we use are very much uh, context dependent and they also uh, drill all the way to the core and the emotional uh, status and state of each learner. So I think a lot of the tools that I have employed in my research are primarily design tools but are applied into learning and learning journeys and they have actually worked quite well. And uh, I will try to explain this thing on the background at, right at the end. Uh, how could I trace, say, a, a roadmap for a visual map or sorry, for visual tools application? Well, first, it makes total sense to use a framework. And uh, Sana's sales of growth is quite uh, uh, comprehensive. And I'm going to showcase one that is called CASEL, which is a collaborative for academic, social and emotional learning. And it's mostly based on intrapersonal and interpersonal competencies. That means some that are more about introspection and others that are more about how we deal with the, the issues outside our body or outside ourselves. A uh, framework like CASEL actually uh, works uh, on five different uh, playing fields, so to speak. And it works on self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, responsible decision making and relationship skills. And it's very much at the core, a social and emotional development tool. Just as any other framework, well, it has a very uh, curated taxonomy. Uh, I put here Bloom's taxonomy, for example, that we are all very, um, I guess, acquainted with. And it's useful in the sense that everybody who wants to talk about knowledge, for example, knows which uh, action words or action verbs or concepts may, might be applied to that particular part of knowledge or learning without having any uh, misconceptions or misunderstanding across different contexts or with different types of learners. Well, the same has happened with uh, with Castle. I think they have developed quite an interesting um, taxonomy and concept development has been quite broad. So in order to um, go into learning about self-awareness or self-management, they have like very developed material that is highly customizable to different types of learners. So that's one of the suggestions for why Castle came up on this presentation. Now, how would we link, say, a framework into visual tools? Well, it pretty much also depends on the case. All of these are um, about people. And because they are learner-centered, they should be uh, applied to every case in specific. Of course, there are kind of broader strokes that, which, that could be applied to everybody, but each case is very specific. 
We have uh, research tools such as, or research artifacts, as they like to call it in Alto, such as questionnaires, interviews, and surveys. However, they might not be able to drill very deep down into what it is, emotional state of every learner. Maybe because they could be uh, time intensive, they, they could be confusing if they're not properly crafted, or maybe because learners don't even have that type of vocabulary at hand. So how to introduce these type of sensibilities or perhaps even the vocabulary so they can speak about, say, emotions in this case, and emotions about learning. Well, uh, there's a lot of different types of um, tools or methods within the visual communication design or visual tools for research that could help these type of things. For example, visual storytelling, reflection practices, sketches, images, uh, posts, etc. And something that we have been using a lot inside uh, design that has to do with emotional design or how to address emotions is this uh, Plutchix wheel of emotion, which is pretty much color coded. And um, this particular one is meant to uh, showcase the eight core emotions that apparently every human has. The more we drift from the center, uh, these emotions tend to mesh up. So the combination of different types of emotions is at the, at the outer skirts of the circle. And as we move closer to the core, then we have a bit more intensity in all those things. And right here at the bottom, I have one of the times in which in a co-working workshop we had a um, co-design workshop we had these little uh, cards and we applied the wheel of emotion just to kind of like jump start the conversation on how are we feeling why are we feeling what are we feeling etc there are many different um good examples of how uh, visuals and and these type of new typologies have been created and by typologies i mean the way in which we start um categorizing and organizing our concepts, such as say anger, joy, fear, or sadness. In this case, um, this particular uh, picture is extracted from emotionally vague. I hope if I switch here, you can actually see it. It's a, it's a project developed by uh, different designers and they wanted to understand how emotions could be matched into different types of visualizations. So of course it's a it's a long process, but they asked questions that were pretty intense, such as uh, what makes you feel like you feel? Where do you feel those emotions? Do they have any directionality? Are they inside or outside? What colors would you uh, assign to each of those emotions? So these are the type of uh, key questions that start building up into a broad typology that each learner develops by themselves. So these are actually quite personal processes. And at the end of the day, I think it is a bit of uh, showcasing the way in which we implement these type of tools. That means that possibly a teacher or a counselor are there to showcase how you can start building, say, a visual storytelling journal or how you could use uh, different types of visualization methods to to improve your learning, to, to gather different types of uh, emotions that are also embedded in this. Design uh, methods are quite a low threshold. That means that they don't pose many um, resistance or they don't offer many resistance to users. Some, sometimes because, well, not only do they open uh, the gateway to creativity and, and kind of free expression, but because they're also slightly gamified. So it is uh, in that sense, quite free and I would say even liberating for some of the learners to utilize. This is one of the examples that I had presented Otavia, uh, thinking of a four week course in which uh, two cycles of convergent and divergent thinking would happen in a say phenomena based course uh, about biology. In this case, it was mushrooms. So. Uh, exercising aspects such as self-management in which the learner has to assess or visualize or anticipate or forecast how long would it take him to or her to finish, for example, the course and how would they visualize that journey literally by drawing it somewhere. It could be analog, it could be digital. And then how it actually happens. So the line over here is um, the learner how 
he uh, forecasted his uh, journey and then how it actually happens. And it is meant to have all these uh, inputs and collection of not only images that they take while they walk around the forest or uh, browsing inside um, uh, the web, the internet, searching for information, uh, reading from the newspaper and gathering all the information that come from different directions in multimodal presentations. So they can also assess which type of information is not only reliable, but also uh, crucial for their understanding. So these type of exercises, I think, not only are visual representations of how they have developed and how they progress, they also uh, present chains of evidence of what the progress is. So I think it's also uh, not only a learning tool, but it can also help with assessment. And here are more or less the calendarization of how a course like this could happen in which points also some type of emotional checkup should happen or could happen, depending on the type of questionnaire that has been crafted, obviously. So it was really short. I think uh, I didn't leave anything out, I hope. <laughs> but uh, I hope you found this interesting. And if you have any questions, please don't doubt uh, to, to reach out. Thank you.